So today we're going to talk about big O notation. Big O notation is used to describe efficiency of algorithms. Uh, its origin was from mathematics. So uh, let's say we have a function f of n. Uh, it's dependent on some variable n. Let's call that like the size of an input. So um, if we were trying to print a line of asterisks and we wanted to print three of them, then n would be three. And this, uh, the height of this graph determines or it shows how much work is required to accomplish this task. So for smaller inputs, it requires this amount of work. For larger inputs, it requires this amount of work. Um, big O notation is a way to describe this right, in, in more general terms than um, the function itself. Because oftentimes, when we're analyzing algorithms, uh, the function is too hard to calculate exactly. So what we like to do is we like to say it's smaller than some function after some point. So let's say we pick this function, g of n, such that after some point, it doesn't matter the point, it's arbitrary. So we, we say after this point right here, n0, uh, after this point, uh, f of n is always going to be lower than g of n um, times some constant. So more formally, we have um, f of n is uh, upper bounded by g of n if for some point n sub 0, or we're going to call it, if um, g of n times some constant is larger than f of n uh, for n larger than n sub nine. All right, so we have a problem here. We're given that our f of n is 2.5 n. So I've graphed it right here. Our slope is 2.5. Our goal is to find what g of n should be. Remember that uh, g of n only needs to satisfy the fact that it is larger than f of n after some point. So uh, the easiest answer would be to um, would be to draw uh, g of n slightly larger than f of n. So this is g of n, and let's say it's um, it's equal to n, but multiplied by 2.6. That way, it's always larger than f of n. Uh, we could actually go a little bit tighter, tighter bound, and call it 2.5 if we wanted. Uh, for big O notation, though, the constant multiplier doesn't matter. Uh, you don't need to solve for it because um, it's unnecessary information. Because when we're talking about efficiencies of algorithms, if a problem gets solved in linear time. Uh, on different systems, you may have different constant multipliers because some systems are faster than other systems. So we leave it out and make it general and just call it g of n. And if we need to, uh, we can multiply by any value we want to make it correct. Uh, there's also several other answers to this question. Um, for instance, we could have also said that um, g of n is equal to n squared is also an upper bound of f of n. Because after some point, this point right here, g of n, which is n squared, will always be larger than f of n because f of n is linear. Right? 2.5n. f of n is linear. g of n is uh, quadratic. And after this point right here, some point, you don't need to know it, uh, n squared will grow larger than n. So commonly, you're going to uh, memorize this list of uh, common g of n's, right? So we have log of n. Uh, this can occur when we're uh, dividing the problem set into smaller pieces every single pass. Uh, this is commonly found using recursive algorithms. For instance, uh, the one you've seen so far is binary search, because the, the data is already sorted. And you're going to divide the list in half every time. So you get a logarithmic runtime of algorithms. Uh, for finding the minimum element in a unsorted array, uh, it's going to take linear time. 
for finding the, uh, for sorting elements using merge sort, it'll be n log n, et cetera. Um, if you have a naive searching algorithm, it can commonly run in n squared time. And then there's, there's other efficiencies. So um, algorithms that run in uh, with this efficiency are uh, sl faster than, a lot faster than these algorithms that run in linear efficiency. Um, and these, each one of these in the list is sorted in order of how long they take. So this is the most time. So let's take a look at an example where we have a bit of code, and we want to figure out the runtime of this algorithm. Uh, the first thing you need to do is define your basic operations. So we're going to say that our basic operations are every time we hit a C out statement. So C out is our basic operation. All right. So let's take a look. So we have uh, this inner, this outer for loop will execute uh, n times. And this inner for loop, uh, for every execution of the outer for loop, will also execute n times. And so because they're nested in that way, our efficiency is going to be n times n, which is n squared. Uh, you can kind of intuitively figure that out because this code prints a rectangle, or sorry, a square of asterisks. Now I've changed the code so that it's 3n instead of 1n over here. So 3n. And now uh, because they're still nested in the same way, we have 3n, which is the outer for loop, times uh, it's doing this inner portion n times n, which gives us uh, 3n squared, which is still big O of n squared, right? Because we ignore constant multipl multipliers like this, and we uh, just care about the actual overall efficiency. Big O n squared. OK, so now I've added another C out statement in this inner for loop here, in the, the very the center part of it. So let's see how this changes the efficiency. So uh, the, the headers still haven't changed. So uh, generally, it's going to be 3n times n. But uh, this n actually represented how much work we were doing in here. And that used to be uh, 1, which was constant. Uh, but now it's 2. So what you do is you substitute uh, 2n for n. So it's 3 times 2n times 2n, which gives us uh, 4 times 3, which is 12, n squared, which is still, because this is a constant multiplier, big O of n squared. 